So let's start with a consideration. So um, first off, for this project, I had to decide, you guys want to throw down some of these chairs so funny, you can. I had to decide, what do I want to present to you? And what do I want you to kind of work through? Throw that one down. Um, and uh, what, do, what do you, what do I want you to start working on? So that's the first consideration for me, is what? Um, how much do I want to present? And so we're starting with, um, with paper transfers. So the next thing I did was, um, well, what do we want to transfer? At least what do I want to show you? So I just made some designs, uh, Adobe Illustrator. You could go and print these out. Um, Just things, they're just patterns. Um, so, as I'm making stuff, I'm making considerations. And I thought, well, that's lots of squares and rectangles. And I threw some circles on there. Then I covered some of those circles up with dark circles. And I'll show you what those look like in a second. I also did some words, MMHS, happy, right? They're backwards, correct? Those at home. They're backwards. Why are they backwards? Yeah, so when you put them on your piece, they're reading the correct way. So then from there, uh, we started painting them. Me and my little 10 year old daughter, Sammy, yesterday were painting these. And um, so that was a consideration. I, I handed her this and I said, Sammy, paint that. So she did. And she picked the colors um, that they got painted on there, and, and I painted some. And so, colors is another consideration, right? What colors you use and why. Um, and we started to paint them like this. And this is actually what got me thinking about talking about considerations today is every time I would pick a square, rectangle, or circle to paint, I have to make that decision. I could start, say, on one like this and just say, I'm going to go one and then four and then every three or four, whatever the pattern is, I could do that, right? Because you'd be making the decision. But that's the start of your considerations. And what happens if you're four lines in and then you go, I want to change this up? Where did that idea come from? You're like, I'm gonna do patterns, but I get four lines in and I'm gonna switch things up. Where do those ideas come from? Okay, and those are things we consider as we are being creative, as we are being artists. So for you, where do they come from? Why that? And do you follow it? Um, I have a, a, a philosophy or kind of a rule in my art making um, is if it is a strong um, consideration, a strong hint, a strong thought, I should probably do it, okay? It used to be if that thought came up more than two or three times, I should probably do it. But because I'm now to the point where I'm like, that's a strong enough thought, it's up there, it's really kind of precise, I should probably do it. So that could be anything, again, from choosing colors to changing your patterns to whatever. Um, it could be intuition. It could be, no, there's lots of things it could be. Um, some more that we colored. I don't know how many we got into yesterday. I think that's about it. So back to this. These are printed off onto a um, a laser printer and a copy machine. They cannot be inkjet based. So if you have a color printer at home, unless, well, even, even then it might not work, but um, a color printer is going to give you, most of them are water-based inks, and these are toner-based inks, which have carbon, they have kind of a wax in them, 
that helps them stick. Um, so they have to be printed off there. If you do a water-based ink and you put glaze on it, you're gonna kind of smear that image. Um, so kind of keep that in mind. All right, then we have our, where are we putting this and on what sort of a consideration. So I made these yesterday um, so I could transfer them. And you should have some of these left over. So you should have two or three of these left over that you can play around with. Um, if you don't, you're gonna need to make some. Um, that was one of the requirements for this last project is that you had some left over. Okay, now let's put some, some on. There's a couple of ways to do this. Uh, these were made yesterday. They're still nice and solid. They're a little bit soft, like I could squeeze them. Um, and they would bend, but uh, there's plenty of water in there. If yours is a little bit drier, you can, and this isn't great slip, I didn't grab any, but you can come in here and actually put a little bit of slip on your piece. So you can come in here and be like, I'm gonna put just a little bit of slip there. And then you would put your transfer on that slip and that will help to bind or, or bond it to the clay. All right, so I'm gonna start to do this. What are some of the considerations, some of the things I would think about um, either as I'm making my transfers, as I'm making my pieces, or as I'm attaching them? I have, as of right this second, I have four sheets of under, uh, underglaze transfers. What are some of my considerations? Which ones to use, right? That's, that's a great one. And that, what goes along with that? What colors? What color? The colors are already picked. So they're already there. So, is that your hand? No. Oh, which ones to use? And that one that goes along with them would be, where am I gonna put it, right? Um, and, and that depends on your creative understanding. We'll start with a simple one here. Um, now the black, the toner, sometimes it will transfer over. Um, and in the long run, it might do something, not much. Um, if it does anything, it'll come out actually a little bit of a kind of a burgundy red color. Um, but usually the way we fire it, when it fires up hot at 2200 degrees, um, it burns most of that off because it's not real thick. Okay, so we're going to spray this with a mist. Just come in here. wet, hit the back side. Okay, and I usually let that sit for just a second. Um, oh, I didn't grab a sponge. Let me grab one real quick. No, I don't want a red sponge. There are a couple of ways of putting these on. Um, we saw her use a sponge today. Some people will use um, rubber ribs because they bend, they're a little bit flexible. And I have some rubber ribs and they are up in this cup. It's hanging up here. So you put them back. Every time we pull out um, a tool like that and we leave it out, they just kind of disappear. So if you use something special like that, not that special, but you know, it's, it's way special. Special enough. Okay, so that started to dry a little bit. We're gonna just throw that on there. And kind of like what she showed us, start in the middle and move out. 
you're going to get rid of bubbles, things like that. Okay, and I'm going to run my sponge on it. If you want, again, you can run a rubber rib. It compresses it more, but it can also, if you're not careful, rip wet paper really quickly. Okay, we'll start to lift that and see what's happening. It's a pretty light color, but it's on there. A couple of little hints on this. Don't rush um, the rubbing of it, but also don't put it on there and then let it sit forever and dry because a lot of the glaze will come back onto the paper. So we'll open that up. Okay, so if you can see, see that colors are light but where the MMHS was is blank or it has a little bit of the black still, which is great. Um, and then again, it's on there. Now when it's fired, since those are the colors, I think that's orange. So it'll come out bright orange like that. And it'll come out sage green like that. So those are the colors that I put on there. Okay, let's do some more. Again, another consideration. What's next? Where do I cut if I'm going to cut something? Right? And you get to decide, do I cut around something? Do I just go for it? Um, completely up to, to you. And if you're a precise person, you can be more precise. If you are a little looser, you can be very looser. Okay, so anything that's colored is going to be able to transfer. Any of the white spaces may not have anything, you may not be able to see them at all. Um, some of the black, again, will transfer. Not all of that will fire through. So if you have something that you want very specific, you want every one of those boxes to show something, you've got to color every one of those boxes in. So it's on there. I'm just gonna go diagonally, diagonally. Is there only one that got that joke? Two? So everything you do, you can plan it out. You can be a little bit more loose with it. We get to this point, I'm kind of holding that. I'm going to set this on one of these foam pads. You can step back one second. This has to be done in this process before it's bone dry and before it's fired. You can't transfer like this onto bisque fired clay. Um, we may get to a process this semester um, where you can, not like this, it's a, it's a different process, but um, I'm trying to see where we, where we get to. Okay. 
Oh, I'm gonna start to lift this to see what it's like. blue transfers really well. Okay. Now, I don't do these to try to be clean and crisp. Um, you can be more clean and crisp, but um, it's harder to do um, with this process. You can take that and use it for something else. Um, so you could put it on as kind of a ghost somewhere else if you want to, and I do that a lot. I'll put, put things on that'll create light ghosting image. Again, another consideration, right? I'm considering what I'm doing sometimes by just kind of throwing things together or happenstance is also a consideration. There's a few little spots on there. We'll see how that goes later on. So something in here, this has transfers and underglazed paintings and some other things on them. So lots of different layers. Um, pass that around if you want. Okay, so let's go back and talk about how to make these. They're pretty much a one and done. Like, I wouldn't use that again. You could, um, but I probably wouldn't. So we'll throw those away. So you're going to grab, I want to see how Sammy's work came out. So I'm going to do that first. Because we were, her and I were talking about whether you have to be really careful or if you can paint over the lines, and if they're over the lines, what happens? So we're gonna find out right now. So, in a second, we're going to start to paint. So, you're, you first need to come up with an idea on what to paint, whether it's because I gave you some random patterns and shapes, or you came up with them on your own, um, words, whatever works from there. Um, I'm going to show you how to do it without. using a copier, but it's going to be more loose. Just open that and see what it's doing. Push that down a little bit. Now some other considerations would be what happens when you let it dry all the way, then re-wet it and put it on. What happens if you just put it on wet? Um, so if you just paint it and then transfer it, what happens? Because um, it'll do different things. And those are the types of things we do when we're experimenting. We're going to be like, oh, I like how that worked out. I don't like how that worked out. And kind of run our process from there. So in my demos, I'll start to get a little chosy or this way. In my, my demos in the past, um, I'm sure I said something like, this is where you can say, 
or ask, could I, or what if? And that's where we're thinking about our considerations, right? Could I do this? Can I do that? What if I did this, right? Um, I was thinking about as I was doing this, now you're, you're kind of pushing into sculpture work right now. So a question you might ask is, can, does this have to be done on these, or can you create um, transfers to go onto the spine of your cup? Okay, that's, that's a question I had. You don't have to have that question, but those kinds of questions can come up, and the answer is yes, you could, right? So if you wanted to add layers and textures to not just big surfaces, you could do little surfaces. You just have to be a little bit more mindful of what, what they do. So something like this, I might come in later and maybe maybe come in and accent, um, add some lines and textures, maybe do a little bit of the scraffito and carve through, can't really see that. Um, all those things are going to add character life, hopefully, in a positive way and not a negative. We just, we just don't know. One of the great things about most of the work we do is if you make it look unique and it looks well built, uh, most people will think that's really cool um, because they don't know if that's good or bad. So it's not that big of a deal. Okay, so let's make some of these. So we're going to take that, you're going to get a paintbrush. Um, depending on how much you're painting, um, the better the paintbrush. I have better paintbrushes over here. That's where these came from. Any of the paintbrushes over there are fine. Um, but underglaze tends to kind of rip our paintbrushes apart. So we'll go through these pretty quickly. So I'm just going to come in here, pull this down nice and close, and we're going to paint. It should be fairly thin, but not like water thin. If it's water thin, that's, that can be a problem, but we're just going to come in here and paint. Our toner doesn't seem to push as far a, away as hers did. So if you cover it up, it stays a little bit. You can come in and um, clean it up a little bit while it's wet. Okay, and something I do once I pull out a brush and a color, I will do all my, like this is brown, so I'm gonna do all my browns. Um, no need to jump back and forth. That's me. You do you. Um, I will tell you that painting, getting these wet and then painting is a little bit um, rough because it thins out your underglaze. So if you are gonna clean your brushes, um, I mean, you are gonna clean your brushes, but what I mean by it, if you're going to do a yellow after this and you clean your brush, make sure you dry it off with like a paper towel. You don't wanna have that wet when you start to paint. Because it just thins it out. So we're gonna call that good. Clean that out, dry that out, and pick another color. Now, if you want to do layering, and you can also use paper like this, this is newsprint. Um, if you want to do 
some layering. I meant to do this a minute ago so it could dry, but I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna paint. Smiley face. Nice and simple. If you want to do layering, the color you want to show has to go down first. Okay, so if I want the smile to show, it has to go down first. So we're going to let that sit. For just a second. Um, what's some other things you can do? Since that's out, you can just right there. Just create patterns or textures or lines. Because a transfer is going to give you different uh, surface texture designs than a paintbrush. So all of these on here were transferred. So you get that kind of that pulling away, at least with the way we do that. Pass that around if you want. Um, Sky blue on here. Do you have any questions so far? None on the questions. All right, let me hit this with the hair dryer so I can move forward. this a little bit. You want that dry? I think I pulled some of it up. But... Okay, back to considerations real quick. Everything we do in this class is a personal consideration. Um, as I give you information and say this is kind of the direction we're going and then I say things like uh, explore that's what we're talking about we're talking about exploring and considering what our next moves are um, if it comes into your head and you're like I don't know what to do or why to do it um, or I don't know if it will look good part of the 
you missed a demo, you haven't asked questions, or you haven't pushed, um, we push, we try to come up with kind of streets or avenues that we like. Okay, okay. So we have our transfers. Then what do you do with it from there? It's up to you. Um, again, I can come in and I can put more layers on. Uh, I can carve into it. Um, any number of things there. Let me dry out this blue one and then we'll transfer it and hopefully it'll show you what I want it to show you. by using the hair dryer, we're changing what just happened because um, it's going to give little cracks and things like that. So today, um, again, I want you to fill out this paper. I want you to pull out all of your projects that you've been working on. Um, I'm going to come around and I'm going to look at them, see where you got to and all that good stuff. Um, and then you're going to starting to press that a little bit more you're going to um, start to do some transferring so you can take what I have and don't take it all because you know there's a lot but you can take one or two little little sections little pieces and try them you can grab some of the papers that I have here you can start to paint them so that on one Wednesday, um, you can play around with this some more. Um, if you want to um, come up with your own, you can. You can either, all right, so we kind of see how that transferred a little bit of both. I'm gonna guess mostly it didn't transfer in the middle because I rushed it and that was the thick spot. Like it didn't dry all the way. So don't rush your stuff or do whatever works for, for you. Um, last thing I think, um, I guess I wasn't specific enough at the beginning of the semester and as we started to move um, that you needed to work to be pushing your boundaries. Um, some of you are, some of you aren't. And um, 
we get to better work by failing. And if we're not making moves because we're afraid we're going to fail, you've already failed. I know, profound, right? Just, just think about that, right? If you don't do something um, because you're worried about failing, you're, you've already kind of failed. Because you haven't done anything. Now, there's lots of things that you could pull that and go, no, um, I decided not to jump off that cliff because I didn't know what was at the bottom, and that's okay, right? That's, that's probably smart. Maybe. Yes, but you also don't splat. That was my wife's, the, her, her philosophy when it came to our helicopter ride in Hawaii. She's like, well, I mean, if we crash, we're only going to crash for like 10 seconds and then we're gone. So I think I hate you so much. That's not a really way to think about it. No, it's a terrible way to think about it. Okay, there's a second print of that same thing. Again, whatever you like. Um, this is not super controllable, um, but slightly controllable. So... Here's the grading sheets. Grab that, fill out your paper. Um, I'll put them right on the end here. Pull out your work. I'm gonna come around and look at them. If you feel like you did not get enough pieces, um, you need to have those soon. Okay, we're exploring on them so that you can move forward. Um, after today, I believe Wednesday we're going to be exploring. I'm going to introduce um, horse hair projects. And then um, Friday, probably demoing horse hair projects. And then I'm going to guess that next week is a work week. Okay? And probably the week after that as well. So, any questions, thoughts, comments, concerns? I will be here. Well, that's silly. All right.